All right, we are back uh, with another installment of Accepting the Challenges. Um, for those of you, maybe this is your first episode and you're tuning in, Accepting the Challenges is a platform that it that that I've really come up with and and wanted to to showcase, shine a light, uh, put the spotlight on um, the educators of the world. Um, we'll have guests on here from Australia to Europe to Asia, India, everywhere. So. Um, we want to have a platform that allows um, educators uh, to hear from other educators from from different walks of life, from different areas of the world, hear their story, maybe pick some tips up, some tactics, and and overall just know and hear that there are other good people out there fighting the fight and, and what we call accepting the challenge. And, and that's what educators do. It's probably the most common uh, thing that all educators in the world have is every day you come in and you could you could have a kid come to you and tell you his worst day or you could have a kid come in and tell you his best day and somehow you have to be able to be prepared for that and to support that so um today's guest um is one that i'm i'm really excited to have on um his name is glenn robbins and glenn is the superintendent and i'm hoping i'm going to pronounce this right uh, he is the superintendent of schools at the Brigantine 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 Board of <laughs> Education. So I always I try to give it a shot. I try to think that I know because I travel around the world and I can pronounce extra syllable things. But uh, I, I do struggle. Glenn, a welcome uh, and B, if you will, maybe share a little bit with the user or the, or the listeners kind of um, your journey in life, kind of going back. Um, and then kind of how maybe that led you into education. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for allowing me to be on here. Um, and thank you for the um, introduction and so forth. So uh, where I am today, I'm in currently in Southern New Jersey, right outside of Atlantic City. It's a barrier island, a Brigantine Community School. Um, and, you know, you get your superintendency. It's a unique type of a wall right now, as you mentioned. And um it's, you know, everybody's going through many challenges, but this COVID challenge has been the ultimate challenge for all educators. Uh, so, you know, I like to look at every opportunity and every crisis as an opportunity. You know, there is a, there's an equal uh, opportunity and playing field for everyone to try to jump onto and, and try to get past these obstacles, if you want to call it that. And I, and I give a lot to my upbringing. Um, you know, most of the time when you talk to educators or people in different backgrounds, they have like a family member or two that was, you know, probably in the background of that. I never had that. Uh, my both my parents were hardworking blue collar people. Uh, my father was a third generation water well driller. So I grew up on the back of a water well drilling rig until I was about uh, 19, 20 years old, you know, playing soccer as well. I was very successful in that avenue as well. Um, but I learned a lot about hard work and what leadership could be and, and shouldn't be, uh, not only from uh, my family, but also from, you know, the soccer career that I had that I've been blessed to have when I was younger. Um, you know, so it wasn't exactly the silver spoon kind of the moment. You know, we worked hard for everything we had to get. I was never thrown into the front of anything. Everything I had to work for worked harder than anybody else. And I think that work ethic uh, stuck with me. You know, I was never the most athletically gifted kid out there. I had to learn what, you know, what hard work was. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. I am thankful because of the fact that, you know, you look at young kids today and they're like eight, nine, 10 years old, and, and some of them got a knack, but then some of them get lazy and they, they don't have to learn what hard work is to keep grinding, to keep better every day. And I had to go to the opposite to try to overcome them. So that stuck with me throughout that. And then, you know, um, going to college. I had scholarships all across the country and I, I chose a college that I was going to go to. And a week before I was supposed to go, I got told I was ineligible if I do uh, NCAA rules. Now, yeah. mind you, you know, I was first team all East Coast, honorable mention all American. I had everything going for me and everything got shattered because I didn't truly dedicate my time and energy to my grades, you know, I, I did what I could, yeah. you know, you know, I took the SATs after winning a state championship, you know, that wasn't probably the best idea the next day. Um, you know, and I never had to really understood that and nor did my family understand that, you know, what really took to get it past the clearinghouse and so forth. So, 
you know, my world came crashing down rather fast. Um, you know, I was playing semi pro ball in high school and that also came to an abrupt halt, but it also it had some silver linings in it. I saw some people that I really admired and I saw that, you know, they're working like two or three jobs. I'll, I'll never forget, like being a high school kid, you, you think the, the future is there for you for the taking. And I, and I see this guy drive up in a big box truck. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Is that's my third job. You know, I, this is, I have to do for a delivery company and it blew me away, you know? So, uh, you know, so I started focusing on education more and more. And then, you know, I got rather blessed to start out as a teacher. I was there for uh, roughly five years and then got my master's before I got tenure in New Jersey. So I was doing my uh, vice principalship and then doing uh, summer school principal and varsity soccer coach for a couple of years and then worked my way up to be a principal at another neighboring town. And, and you know, just for connections to social media and putting out all the great things that our teachers were doing and our kids were doing. Um, I gained national status as a national digital principal of the year. And I was like nice. completely shocked. And for the fact that here I am, this regular guy who's just trying to do the best we can do every day for our staff and kids. And people realize that, and, you know, from there, I kept you know, branching out and getting to all these different types of affiliations and, and uh, uh, you know, advisories and so forth that I'm part of on national levels for multiple organizations now and at, at college level as well. And, you know, I went on to be a superintendent at another district in Tabernacle, and now I'm, I'm back in Atlanta County and Brigantine, which is truly an amazing spot to be. Uh, and I'm surrounded by an amazing team. And talk about a struggle or a journey or accepting the challenge. I started this job in February, and the world came to a seizing halt mid-March in New Jersey. So, you know, for the most part, I had to learn um, – who my staff was almost virtually. And I worked, I hit the ground running before I started in February, trying to get to know people coming in here and there and introducing myself, going to board meetings and so forth. But, you know, I used it to an advantage that during this whole COVID, I was calling staff members and just having conversations with them, checking in and say, hey, how are you? You know, who's in your family? What's going on with your family? And I think that really went a long way. Um, I also took the advantage of it that I started reaching out to a bunch of friends from across the country and globe and saying, hey, would you mind talking to my staff to just you know, pump them up? They're, they're going through so much trying to lift up the spirits of families and kids in, in such unique circumstances. And we every Friday we had uh, positive leadership talks you know, awesome. to boost up our, our staff. So like I said, it was, you know, every day is a challenge and it's just how do you want to accept it? You know, you, you, you control your attitude and you control your effort. And that's the way I tried to envision it. And now we're somewhat back in the building and I get to know people face to face finally sure. or, or mask to mask. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, so we're still getting through it. But that's that's a bit of my journey so far where I am in my life today. Yeah. So so one of the big things that, that sticks out for me is, is and it came up multiple times is hard work either, either because of circumstance or self-infliction or, you know, d different things. Um, how, how is that translated into, um, cause this isn't, this isn't, um, I mean, you, you, you've had some time in administration and you were, you were superintendent of another school district, um, uh, before when you're, when you're, when, and now th this is, the unique thing about you, you, what you and I have in common is we've, we've both been in a higher leadership position and we do those things. So um, I, I'm curious to know from a leadership standpoint, um, how has, how did that experience through life um, and that hard work, how do you enter intertwine that into your culture with your team as it trickles down? Yeah. And I, that's a great question. Uh, and, and culture is everything. And when it comes to an organization, Absolutely. you know, if you don't have that personalization, you don't have, you know, relationships and communication and then, you know, and you're not working on culture every day as a leader, then I don't know what you're truly working on. Um, you know, that's first and foremost. And, and like you said, there's adversities and so forth. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget, I was a sophomore in high school and I got selected to go try out in Americana Stadium, which is the largest stadium in Brazil. And I was going to have a tryout for multiple scouts and so forth. And here I am, this young kid's all excited. And I tore my ACL two weeks before. And I'll never forget my grandfather said, no, it's not the problem you have. It's how you handle it. And that was something that always stuck with me. So throughout this whole process and, and growing up, I became a history teacher. 
And I was very big on stoic philosophy, very big on leadership. And here are all these people, guys and gals from thousands of years ago, dealing with similar situations that we have. You know, like here we are with COVID right now, and you have Marcus Aurelius that had, you know, a bubonic plague during his entire reign. That's so, what I was going to ask you. <laughs> so not not to interrupt you, but I I, I actually give away copies uh, meditations. So Marcus okay. Aurelius is meditation. So if for those of you listening who have no idea what we're talking about, it's a very very small book you can read in a setting or two. Um, I, it is worth a read if you're in a leadership uh, uh, spot whatsoever. I, but that's why I, that's why I was turning around and looking to see where my stack is because I literally have a stack of them that I give away to friends. Yeah. So, and like I said, I've, I've learned to adjust with that. And I've learned to live with that. Um, you know, you control your actions, you know, you can control what you can control of, not the outside, you know, you're responsible for yourself. And, and you know what you realize as you go up through the ranks that, you know, there's always talk of servant leadership and that, and then it, I, I just call it leadership that should be yeah. already built in and yeah. you try to be transformational, but you know, at the leadership, the, the, the more you rise up, the more responsibility you have to try to empower others. You know, I'm not one that's like looking to build soldiers underneath me or yes men or yes women. I want people that, you know, I, we can lift up each other. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. Oh. And I want somebody to tell me no. You know, I would Absolutely. love to push back on that. And and like I said, I think that's something that, you know, you try to build a culture that people know that they can accept the fact that they can take a risk that they can be an outlier in some way. Now, obviously, you know, without harming anybody and, and, you know, physically or mentally or anything like that, but knowing the fact that they can take risk and teach differently than they've ever had to before and, and try to instill more confidence in individuals and, and, and curiosity and so forth. So that's the type of leadership that I try to in, install on others. Uh, I want them to take it and run and build more leaders one day. And I think that's Ultimately, our gift to society is trying to make the world better for one another. You know? a, 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 absolutely, and and it sounds like you and I you have have some very similar um, philosophies when it comes to some of this stuff. Because I, I, I when 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 I was CEO and and building and running this international business for me, I hated the word boss. I hated the word employees. Like I I I, I despised it because I always. Um, maneuvered and operated on the premise of I actually work for my team, not the other way around. So so it's my job to make sure that you have everything you need to have as stress free of of an experience while you're working and as successful as possible. And I think so. I, I definitely think sometimes leadership um, fails with that. Um, you know, we, 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 we can see that with other companies. We can see that within our government. We can see that with sports teams, right? Like we, we, you know, it's a leader can spot a bad leader really quick, right? A good leader can spot a bad one really, really quick. And what, what, what I, here, here's sometimes, so I'm going to flip it because this is sometimes what I think is lost. Um, you mentioned that you started this job in February literally probably within weeks of school shutting down and this is all that's happening and all that, it, it would be difficult for a superintendent. It would be challenging, maybe not difficult, but challenging to, to take on a new position as a, as the superintendent of leading an entire school district. Uh, right. And, and maybe, maybe what sometimes gets lost is you're not just the leaders of the people there at the board of education office, uh, you're not just the leaders of the administration. You're not just the leaders of all the other support staff and teachers and students. You, you're very much a community leader or should be a very much a community leader because these people are looking to you. Right. I think we saw it. We, we saw it when this happened. Right. Teachers mm -hmm. have always gotten the bad shake. They're underpaid. They're overworked. We know that they bend. They don't break. They'll show up. And ah, I really hate using this term, but they'll. They'll perform uh, medical tasks now that they've not been trained to do. Like they'll, they'll do all these things. Right. But now all of a sudden we have to have you working so that our economy can stay going and that life can. So maybe we're way more, maybe they're way more important than maybe some people realized. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how, because 
I mean, you you have kids. I'm assuming you have a family. Yeah, so I have you two little ones. Yep. Okay, so you got a family. So this is this is an uneasy and nerve wracking time for you as well, right? You you probably have some some older relatives and family, mm -hmm. and it's you know, I'm curious to know how did you deal because that gets lost as a leader. You know, no, very and I can I can say this for example, no one ever came to me and said, "Hey, are you okay?" Um, you know, how are you, are you, um, are you okay? Are you all right? Like, I mean, this, I can't imagine what you're going through. I look like them slept in three days. <laughs> um, you know, all those things. So I'm going to ask you, how have you done that? Have you had people around you that have done that for you? And, and how, how, how did that kind of play out for you? Cause this is tough. I mean, this is tough stuff. And, and but you know what though? Like it's all as a incredible opportunity um for the sure. leadership aspect so you know when it's all started coming down the road and we started you know hearing what may or may not happen um you know this is the beautiful thing of where i am now i called over to our city manager and to our mayor and we, we started having those conversations you know behind the doors with those two as well as the board members and then we opened it up and i i got the chief of police chief of fire the city manager public works the mayor you know city council um you name every every leader you can think of in an organization on a, in a city uh, we all came together as one with the administrative team as well as the food services as well as it services and said look here's the opportunity here's what might happen and i'm speaking right now not as the elephant in the room or not as the hippo as the highest paid person's opinion i was like we need to be together as one more than ever on this because it's going to take like you said an entire community to get through this Absolutely. you know so when it's all started locking down you know, we have roughly 45% free and reduced lunch where we are. And yeah. I know once the casinos shut down next to us, that number went up much higher. Sure. Um, you know, so our thought immediately, and I know it was something close to my heart, was the mental health, not only on just the kids, but the families and themselves, you know, reaching out to the OEM. And throughout this, the month that we were shut down, you know, we were still providing meals to the families that need. We were still providing tech support. We were still teaching every day to our students and so forth virtually. It was unique. I had my eight-month-old on my one shoulder, my eight-year-old on the other, and a dog. And I, I wanted people to realize that I was in the same boat sure, with Sure, you're human. You're human. Yeah, yes. I'm human. And, and guess what? We're going through the same trivial things that you're going through mentally at home. And, you know, so like I said, we would, I would call the OEM like once a week. Hey, how are we doing? Are the guys and gals in the police force doing okay? Are they responding to more calls? You know, is there any crisis that's going on that we need to be aware of? So, you know, between our administrative team uh, doing that with our teachers, and we were just checking on each other the whole time. And that was the whole purpose of that. You know, I took a, you know, remember, I'm new to the leadership. Team. Sure. Sure. So we started doing administrative huddles and I, I went out and researched as much as I could about every successful remote business there ever was yep. and seeing what strategies they were using. So it. then we would come on and start talking about, you know, giving people virtual high fives on projects they were working on and weren't working on, you know, Absolutely. they're going to be doing. What are they, what are they struggling with? Hey, what did you watch last night on TV? What are you reading right now? And then we actually got into the actual meetings and the meetings, I don't like to go long. Yeah. But sometimes they were needed. And it was more of that that relationship building more than ever. And I think we came out of this with a much stronger communication than we ever like, yeah, had. You're, much, you're, way, you're way tighter than what you normally would have been. Yeah. And, you know, so, you know, and, and that was part of the blessing, too. Like I said, every Friday we had famous authors come on. We had educators coming on. We had, you know, I was able to get John Gordon, an incredible author, come on the one time. And just talk about all these different things that teams do. And then we we're able to give books to each other and so forth. So we had that continuous conversation. And I would call each member and say, hey, how are you doing? You know, how are you doing with your kids at home while you're teaching and or you're leading and you're teaching physics in your household as well? <laughs> you know, like, how's that? With going? no training, with no training, oh, two yeah. weeks notice and no training. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you had to be understanding of that. You had to be flexible. You had to be compassionate and graceful. Uh, but like I said, I think we came out of that stronger. And then when we put together a plan to come back, uh, extended the invite again and had every island leadership there was, plus parents. Uh, brought in the busing company so people could see what it was going to look like, made them walk around the hallways to see what it was going to look like for the kids to experience it through their shoes and through a teacher's shoes and so forth. And 
unfortunately we had to start remote and I, you know, we're, we're pushing hard to get back to where we need to be to get back in the building. But I wanted people to see from the lens of a child, what it's going to be like wearing a mask all day, sure. what sure. it's going to look like on a bus. And once again, it was that continuity. And then taking it a step further, are we cleaning the buses extra? So I had, you know, I kept the mayor and the conversation throughout all this. He was simply amazing as well as city council people, you know, and we asked for donations, uh, you know, the chamber of sure. commerce, I got involved and they gave us lanyard for each mask. So in case it falls, it at least sticks to it. Um, you know, we asked after our clean communities to get water bottles for each kid for the water bottle filling stations. So we really, really tried hard in regard to that. And um, like I said, I think it made our island stronger. I think it made our community stronger. And, and I'm blessed in that regard to work with such great people because they would also call me, which I was not used to, and say, hey, Glenn, are you okay? You yeah. know, are you taking care of yourself? Doesn't normally happen. That's, that's no. not, from a leadership standpoint, for those who have never been in a real leadership standpoint, um, I can tell you, even your own family doesn't do it because you're almost <laughs> seen, um, you're almost seen like you're a superhero, right? Like, yeah. and I don't, and I don't mean that yeah. to like, like, like be arrogant. You're like, you're seen as like, you're superhuman. And like, you know, that guy solves every problem. You can handle the weight of the crown. Yep. Yeah. You can handle that crown and you, you're responsible for holding that crown. But like I said, it was an anomaly. And, and I realized how, how blessed I am in that regard that I had, you know, my board members calling to Absolutely. check in on me when I was calling to check on them. And, you know, other people and our, our mayor as well. We had one that recently passed away, uh, God bless his soul. And, and the deputy mayor who is going through all that, we had built an amazing relationship, you know, and because uh, we're both, you know, we're both young fathers, you know, so we could talk about Absolutely. those struggles as well. But like I said, we, we tried to look at it as a way to build up just a community in itself, not just the school in itself, because there's, like you said, educators do so much. Oh. You know, they, they, they give so much. They, people realize you know, the food services that we provide, the computer IT services, the mental health services. You know, we took that a step further and kept it going over the summer, um, you know, just because we were we were worried about our families. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, so we accepted that challenge and I'm, I'm proud of it. I st we're still not to where we need to be, but we're getting there. We'll take it one day at a time. And and I'm very confident and I can say this with pride. I know my staff will be up to that task when we get there. Well, I, I love, I love from what it sounds like the proactive approach that you took of, Hey, um, and, 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 and what I hope people listen. And if you maybe listen to this twice, when you go back and you hear it again, um, the fact that there wasn't a lot of eyes and I did this and I did that. And, and, and I don't, I don't know Glenn outside of this interview. Um, but but those are things that I pick up on because they're important. And what I mean by that is, is he sat here and just told us that he realized I don't have all the answers. I can't fix every problem. And there's a lot of things that I don't know. And there are really, really smart people around me that can help me. I want to learn from them. Yep. I want to get from them. And that is so, so key. And I think and I think you would even agree let's even take the superintendent role out of it. If you've got a department leader, if you've got a, a, a principal in a school and you're working with those, I think those, those same principles are important. Um, you know, we're, you know, just like a head coach of a football team, right? Like whoever wins the Super Bowl this year, Andy Reid did not win the Super Bowl <laughs> last year, right? Patrick Mahomes won the Super Bowl <laughs> last year. That's like, you don't, but if they lose, Andy Reid, it's his fault. You know, he made some yeah. bad calls. You know, that that is the that is the thankless job of being a leader, right? And, and it really is, yeah. And and to your point, yeah, it's it's all about us, unity over self, you know. Uh, Absolutely. And, and pushing on everybody's strengths, like you mentioned. Like you had, you know, like I said, everybody in that room together, asking and covering every basis we could think of. And like we said, we each knew everyone had a strength, and I'm very big on that. If you're in that meeting, you got to have a voice. And if you're not speaking, you don't need to be in that meeting. And in my personal opinion, everybody offers something. And to your point, I like to work alongside people. You know, I don't like to bark down orders uh, because, you know, it's just not the way a team should be today sure. and, and if ever, you know. I, I, I agree. And, and it's really ironic that you said there are other people that – that play a factor. There are so many people that 
that will never get the shine. There are janitors who literally now are in schools cleaning the bathroom every 30 minutes the entire day. And, um, you know, I don't like, that's not a job that a lot of people are lining up for. That's not a job that people are getting in line and saying, I want to go do, but those people are doing it. They're not complaining. They're going about it. They're doing it with a smile on their face. Some, some of the most lively personalities you see in a school are the custodians and the lunch ladies. Right. And yeah. these people serve, that's what they're doing. They are literally serving, um, those kids and those teachers in that school building. And, those, those things are, they're so important. I actually talk on a couple episodes uh, about um, one of the, one of the very first people in the entire education system that acknowledged I had something going on as a kid in life um, was, uh, was a janitor. And, um, you know, we, he, back then I was, I tell the story, I don't want to tell it all because I've told it a couple of times and people have asked, but you know, you used to have the erasers and you, the chalk eraser. And then a lot of people don't know this, but there was a cleaning machine in the janitor's closet. It was like a huge vacuum and you ran the eraser and it would suck the chalk out. So I would, I would do anything to get out of class in elementary yeah. school. I was looking and I got to the point to where I kind of leveraged my relationship where he would come at the end of the day and come ask if I can go around and help. And we were walking around one day, black guy, older guy, um, and, uh, just reached down one day and we were walking the hall, put his hand on my shoulder. And he looked at me, he said, you know, Oh buddy, I want you to know something. He said, me and you ain't that much different. And he just, he's like, you know, I know sometimes things might seem like they're tough. He's like, just keep fighting. And it's like, I've never told this guy what was going on, but somehow he was able to pick up and understand yeah, and knew. see like he, he knew. knew he's been around, he's seen it. And, yeah, and, and, and it, I think that's something like you, like you mentioned, like, you got the food services and you, and you got the custodial services. And I call our custodial services our guardians of the grounds. You know, they're, they're here to take care of us. And they, sure. our, our leadership team that we have here with our director uh, is phenomenal, you know, because every step of the way he was involved in the conversation. All right. So if we're going to do this, Hey Mike, did this work? You know, so it wasn't like once again, you know, separating people on islands. This island had to have everybody going cohesive. But you know, sure. once again, like if deliveries were coming, how's this going to be covered? You know, if there's cleaning services, how's that going to be covered? Everything had to go through that. And I think that's also somewhat of an anomaly too. Most of the time it's you tell them what to do and they have to do that. And like I said, when you got your guardians of the galaxy, galaxy guardians out guardians of the of the, yeah, yeah. Leader, well, of the area. Yes, yeah. All right. They can they go over everything that goes over in our building. They know where all the leaks are. They know where all the little things are. You know, they know when things to deliver. What teachers want what. Um, you know, they do so much for us, and they're and they're underappreciated. And uh, you know, to your point, they've been around. They've seen a lot. Sure. You know, so people unfortunately look at them because of maybe the the job the description they're in. You know, is not flashy, and that's a shame because they're truly amazing individuals who care and love. You know, and they're also parents. You know, so, so can, much to give. So, so it's so it's really funny. Um, whenever I so in my travels around the world, whenever I would go give a talk, or um, I would come in and potentially partnering with a school or a national governing body, if I ever got the opportunity to interact with someone from the from the custodial crew that was there. I always wanted to stop and pull them aside and have a very private conversation and just ask, like, how do you, do you enjoy working here? And a lot of, and, and I think sometimes I would have staff members say, why are you asked? Like, why does it matter? But that human being is literally hearing and seeing everything that is happening in this building. And if they hate it here, it's because of the people around here. And if they hate it, I don't want any part of it. I don't. And I've and I've literally walked away from business deals and different things because this is not the culture that I want to be associated with or represent with. And those and those things, they just matter. They 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 absolutely matter. So let me ask this, Glenn, how 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 many schools are in your district? So luckily, I may have uh, well, there are two, but they're combined as one now. Okay. So I am in a smaller district. I've gone from massive district to a much smaller one. And to be honest with you, I, it's a personal choice. And it's sure. also, um, it's, a, it's an incredible blessing because once you get the kids back in here, small numbers, you get to know the kids by their name, not by numbers. Absolutely. And, so forth. and same thing for the staff. Absolutely. So how many students total is that? 
just under 500. Okay. We are. So we're a okay. short community, like I said, right outside of Atlantic City. And the, yep. the economy collapsed a while ago, so that didn't help us, you know. And then the housing market starts to go back up in pricing. So then you got sure. second, third homeowners and so forth. But um, um, that's where we are. Okay. All right. Good deal. So let me ask you this. Okay. What is something that you would go back? Because you've been in the education world now for how many years? Uh, all my life, you want to consider me as a kid, never getting sure. out of it. But yeah, I would say uh, professionally, I believe it's 18 now. 18 years. What is something that if you could pick up the phone right now and call yourself 18 years ago and say, look, you're, I, I need to give you a heads up on something. You need to know this about your journey in education. What would that be? Oh, that's a great question. That's a really good question. You know, I think it would be, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Do more meditation. Take a deeper <laughs> breath every once in a while. Uh, take more gratitude walks. You know, to understand that how far you've come. What's a gratitude? Uh, what's a gratitude walk? Share with us a little bit about what that. Yeah, what, so you, do. you know, walking around the building, walking around outside, and taking three to five things that you're grateful for that happened that day. Okay. You know, it could, it could be just that I got out of bed. It could be I tied my shoes. Some days it could be that I'm breathing. Yeah, yes, you know, let, let's be honest. Like crazy world that we live in today, 2020. Half of us didn't have the stuff on our bingo cards. You know, like that yeah. keeps happening. So, you know, things like that. Like, what did we achieve today with our students? What did we achieve today with our student body? What did we achieve with our administrative team or the community? You know, what did you do with your wife? You know, and your or your kids. So, uh, you know, things like that. So meditation, gratitude walks, you know, reading more. Uh, I love some incredible authors that really helped me, like I said, with the leadership and the stellar philosophy and so forth. Um, but also smile. You know, every day is a journey and you're going to get frustrated. Like I said, it's easy to say you're working on trying to control everything that's internal. But sometimes it's it's easy to go off too and just like shake your head or get frustrated when you see these things on social media and you got to take a step back and, you know, don't say anything. <laughs> sure, sure. What is... um. Because you've obviously had a lot of coworkers uh, over over eighteen years, um, what is something that you? Because I for and I got I asked this, I guess, because for me and my my journey, I'm playing for legacy, right? So I, I tell people that I want um, I want everybody to love me, but I don't care if anybody loves me. Meaning, um, if I pass away, I hope I hope that you and I develop a friendship and a connection out of this to the point to where if I pass away. You you cut you feel obligated that you got to come to my my funeral, and it's 114 degrees and it's raining outside and there's a line wrapped around the building, but you're there and you're ticked off because like man he had to make me come here like you know <laughs> I, I want I want that kind of impact but at the same time if you look at me and you say uh, you know you judge me or you, you, you know, your preconceived idea of what you may think of me, it doesn't change how I move and how I operate and how I choose to impact people and to help people around the world. So, um, I ask about legacy a lot, um, is what, what do you, what are, what are a few things that you hope that your coworkers got from you and your experience and your journey along with interacting with them, either from, you know, that teacher classroom to classroom and, you know, we're both dealing with the good or bad leadership in the front office that we're having to deal with, uh, being the good or bad leadership in the front office to now being in charge of all of it. Uh, you know, whether, whether you, and, and it all being your fault, whether it's your fault or not. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm curious of what are a couple of things maybe you hope that those people picked up or, or gained from you or understand about you? Well, I think, you know, honest, fair, um, you know, empowering. Like I said, I really like to try to build up others. I like to ask what they can do and what they, what haven't they done and how can we do something different? You know, have, have you been teaching a certain way for so long and why, you know, have you, have you, you know, sometimes they get so caught up in this hedonic adaptation where it's the same thing over and over and over again and trying to break that mold of them. Uh, so just be more critical thinkers. And at the same time, like I mentioned, a little empathetic, yep. understanding that we're all human beings. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, if, if I can create or help inspire new leaders, then, you know, I'm happy, you know, and I, I leave you with some kind of a positive message. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you keep in touch? Do you have some people maybe that have um, kind of come up under the ranks 
under under your uh, your watch that have now kind of gone on and you, you keep track of those things? Oh, yeah. Not only keep track, but, you know, connect on social media a lot, sure. you know, simple phone calls. And I was at my son's baseball practice last night, standing there in a little bit of a drizzle or rain and talked to a former teacher of mine and a former director of grounds of mine last night just because we're friends. And uh, yeah. you know, just checking up on them. And they're checking up on me. And um, so I enjoy those. It's, it's all about the networking. and It's all about who, you know, and, and like I said, your goal is to continue to help each other out throughout life. You know, people say, oh, I, I feel bad. I'm leaving a profession or I'm leaving a certain school. You're, you're just leaving the physical ability. You're not leaving the yeah. actual people. You know, you can still have those conversations, especially in today's society, whether Absolutely. it's some kind of platform. Uh, and, and I'm blessed in that regard because, you know, we, people still want to have those conversations with me and I want to have them with them. You know, they, they make me better and hopefully I try to make them better. You know, if not at least a sounding board, you know, what <laughs> was, was your, um, where, cause you, you've mentioned and you brought it up kind of as a theme of kind of how you go about how much relationships mean to you and, and how uh, of an important role it obviously is not only in your professional life, but also your personal life. Um, where, who, who, where did you get that from? Where is that? Is that your, from your dad was what he was doing or was, was it your mom or another family member? You know what? That's a great question. Um, I think it's probably just from sports. You know, yep. growing up playing okay. soccer. I get it. Connect, yep. Connecting with other individuals. You know, I used to, uh, what you call it, work at camps and so forth as a high school student and a college student, you know, for soccer camps and so forth. And I just started realizing the power of connectivity. And then, you know, it's, uh, you know, the old saying, it's like, not what you know, it's who you know. Absolutely. And, uh, it kind of stuck with me. And I'm like, all right, well, maybe I can start to realize know some more people. And then, you know, as you as you go through the ranks, especially in education or any career, you start reading about other successful individuals. You're like, well, how did they get there? What did they go through? What was their struggles and so forth? So, you know, through Twitter and through social media, I really started following into those individuals. And from there, it just exploded. And then we started sharing stories and, and realizing that hey, you're not the only oddball out there. There are other people just like you that are going through very similar things that want to talk. And uh, Absolutely. thankfully, I, I found some really good people along the way. And those, and those things definitely help with mental health and, 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 you know, those things. And I think, especially in 2020, mental health is, and especially with the year 2020, um, you know, mental health, it, it, it's one of those things where, because you brought up meditation, um, and, and, and I think that's, that's really cool. Um, because there are some people that are in leadership in 2020 still who, you know, are still part of what I call the old guard of, you know, you tough it up. You, you know, you put a smile on a face and you just push through and you, anybody who doesn't like it, they can get out of the way. <laughs> and, you know, those different things, we all have health, right? We all have mental health. It's either good or bad. It's like, I can either go out here and go run a 5k or I can't. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the two. Um, how, how important do you, is there anything that like you mentioned meditation, do you kind of intertwine that in with some of your leadership style with your team? Do you share with them some different ideas or apps or books or different things? Yeah. So I'm on Twitter a lot and, uh, just constantly pumping out different books, sharing books with them. Um, but yeah, it's it just mental health is first and foremost. So people always say like, oh, you have to be student first, student first. Well, if we don't take care of our teachers, how are the kids ever going to be, you know, taken care of? So it's like same thing with you. If you're not taking care of your employees and, and to your point about the custodials earlier, you know, like you said, the culture is a, is a good or bad, you know, we started pumping out that as well. You know, meditation time. I had mindfulness coaches come on and lead different sessions and so forth for different activities only because we're all in this together in regards to it. I, I know that sounds cliche and I know that sounds like the other thing again and again, but SEL is so needed. And to your point, yeah, the good old days was, are you hurt or you injured? Get back in there. I don't want to hear it, but the, you know, smirk on your face, whatever it may be. Uh, you can do that. Sometimes you won't get very far. Uh, but you know, if you're not stopping and reflecting and, and really trying to grow yourself, then you're not going to help anybody else out. And the same thing for the staff, you know, take a moment, go for a walk, do those types of things and, and be, you know, present in that moment to try to continue to grow. What, what, why do you do what you do? 
I don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess the I guess the reason I ask this is um, I, I like I like pointing out the obvious, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the obvious is you've been in education for eighteen years. Um, you've had you've reached kind of the pinnacle in public education of being a superintendent at, at a big district, a small district. Um, you could transform that and double your pay going and working in a corporate world, doing something else uh, and doing that. But you chose to go in a different direction. So there's obviously an altruistic point uh, of why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, so I ask. Right. And and to be fair, so that the viewers and listeners understand, I, I don't come up with these questions beforehand. I just kind of naturally go with where it goes because everybody's different. So I sometimes I catch people off guard. Um, but I, I, I guess I'm, I'm curious, um, because you, you serve a community and sometimes it might just be seen as, uh, here's Glenn and you know, his, uh, you have daughters or sons. I have two sons. You have two I'm sorry, sons. One son, one son and a daughter. Sorry. Apologies. Okay. One son. <laughs> what, 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 what is your daughter <laughs> I mean, the oldest or youngest? She's the youngest. She's eight months. Oh, well, yeah. You're toast. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, so, so my oldest, my oldest is, is 19. Uh, who's a daughter. Uh, and then, I, so I've got, I've got three boys and two girls and then I've got a daughter who's nine and yeah, you, you're toast. Yeah. Every, uh, everything, uh, there's going to be a lot more of those pink shirts you got on Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, in, in, yeah. In, 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 in your life and pink nails and all those different things, <laughs> uh, at times. So, so I guess I, I am curious, like what, what drives you? What, why? I mean, obviously money isn't what, what's driving you. Um, so, so why do you do what you do? You know, that's a great question. Um, growing up, I just always enjoyed giving back and trying to help out. And, um, you know, coming up through the years, like, you know, when I started teaching my, my teaching salary was at $35,000 a year. And, uh, and I was like, wow, this is a lot of money for, you know, college kid. And then sure. you realize how much debt you owe and you had to quickly hurry up and taxes pay it. and all these other things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The real life comes rushing down. But you know, as I came up, I always enjoyed giving back and, and working with kids. It was something that I always simply I got into when I was a, in high school, uh, working with a local youth team and then went to doing the camps as well. And then when I got in the classroom, like you said earlier, you know, you see kids at their best moments and their worst moments. And, and some of the stories I was getting you know, I was, you know, freshly 23, 24 years old when I got into the classroom. And I'm hearing these kids that are 18, 19, 20 years old in the high school telling me about some amazing stories and God awful stories that you wouldn't wish upon anybody. And I kept saying to myself, well, how can I can how can I do more? How can I do more to keep helping out more? And then you know, I had some some co-workers along the line said, Hey, you make a really good principal, you make a really good superintendent. And I would laugh at them then, you know, yeah, like, yeah, not yeah. a chance. Never, never. But then, you know, like I started thinking about that. I was like, how can I serve more? You know, how can I give back more? And, you know, like I said, you become set successful as a teacher, you become successful as a vice principal or whatever your field may be. But then you have to completely change and adapt again when you go into a higher level of leadership. And now, you know, I, I love the fact that I get to serve not just the school, but a full community uh, and try to better those individuals. So I think that's why I do what I do. It's my way of trying to try to better the world. You know, I don't have all the answers, but you know, like I said, I like to build a collaborative culture that, you know, we can come up with something bigger and better. And like you said, as you're as a father and I'm as a father, a young father, <laughs> with many heartaches to come, according to you. Um, you know, I just want a better world for our kids, and I want a better world for their kids one day. You know, yeah. and if I can try to help out in some minute kind of a way, and I was like, you know, get a couple of things right, then that's a success. Absolutely. I don't know if you got heartaches coming your way, but you definitely have a <laughs> a, 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 a gigantic uh, buffet of humble pie with a little girl. <laughs> Uh, coming your way. Uh, how, how old is your son? He's eight years old. Oh yeah. So, so he's rough and tough and wrestling oh, yeah. around and banging and clanging. Yeah. You are world <laughs> is changing for you. You will have a, you will have a wig and yeah, you, you will have on all kinds of stuff that you don't even know is coming in a, in a great way. And I, and I tell people, uh, having a daughter humbles you in a way, um, that, uh, and I actually have a book I'll recommend to you, uh, and send over and, and send over your way, um, okay. about, about having a daughter because it will, um, I truly believe it will actually change your perspective on a lot of things in life. Um, because you just, 
as t- I mean, I grew up, uh, you know, I grew up rough, rough. I've had a gun pulled on me three times in my life. I've, I've been in these different environments. You can, you can take me to the West end of Detroit and walk around. You can take me down to, uh, Opelika, Florida and walk around and I'm totally comfortable. I'm totally, you know, safe, but man, when your daughter gets up in your lap and she snuggles up and we read this to me and you know, then she falls asleep and you're sitting there and your arms numb because you don't want to move. Oh yeah. You it, it's, it's coming. It is different than boys, right? Di- boys go through that, you know, tough. I don't love on me. Get away from me. I'm tough. No, I don't want to yeah, kiss right, right now. now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, no, trust me. I know. <laughs> so, um, so, so let me ask you this and then we'll, we'll start to wrap this up. Cause I know you got a busy day and I definitely don't want to keep you all day. Um, tell me about the one student that made that impact on you at some point in your career. You're like, man, this right here is why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is, this is what it's all about. Oh, just, just one. I well, just give you, you know, I, I know that you've been in this a long time, 18 years. So you, you've had some stories that come along with it, but maybe one that sticks out. Cool. I've had some really good ones and some really sad ones and some really bad ones. Um, yeah. you know, I, I think the culmination of the ones that would come to me asking for advice and the ones that maybe didn't have a father. Um, you know, and that was unique as a, as a young kid and i say kid but young adult you know getting out of college i didn't have any children at the time and here i am coaching here i am teaching and these families coming to me for parent advice you know how do we raise my son right you know mom single moms here and there Mm -hmm. and and then you had some other families that just didn't care and then you had the kids that were searching for any type of love they could get you know so you know seeing that and being able to try to help them um it meant a lot to me. It really did as a, as a, not just as a teacher or an educator, but just as a human being. And like I said, that's why people get into it. That's why educators get into it. They're not into it for the money. They're not in for it for the fame. They're in there to try to make a difference for the better for individuals. Because, you know, some people come from very vast backgrounds, like you mentioned, and, you know, some are given a silver spoon, but regardless, we, they're kids and we try to love them and we try to give them something better. But, you know, so like I said, some of those stories are, you know, where people are asking for parental advice from a young 24 year old uh, was, was kind of humbling, kind of unique and a lot of soul searching because you kept thinking about, well, if I give them the wrong piece of advice, I might just screw up this kid's life for good yeah. and doors. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, and they look at you in that leadership role as a coach and as a, as an educator, because, you know, you do have the schooling, you know, but and I and thankfully I had some good schooling beyond school. Um, yeah, yeah. You learn a lot did, more outside of school than school. <laughs> did, those, did, those, did those kind of questions cause you to start doing some research and 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 start to kind of try and learn other aspects of what you always. might encounter? Always, yeah. You know, like not only those questions, but it was also like, like I said, how can I continue to, to develop as an individual, and how do I continue to learn and you know, I started reading things for the first time that were intriguing to me that weren't forced upon me by sure. school, you know? So, you know, the psychological aspects of that, you know, why do people do certain things? How do they do certain things? That started to intrigue me more and more, you know? And even then, when I was a young guy coaching and so forth, you know, I started teaming up the community again and, and trying to work with them and building platforms and programs to help those kids. So, um, once again, relied on so many other individuals and always realizing that <laughs> I was the furthest thing from the smartest person in the room. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I can tell you from experience, I can agree with that, that if you're, if I'm, I'm nervous, if I sit down to do a project and I immediately recognize that I'm the smartest person doing it, I'm, uh, I, <laughs> that we're in a bad spot here. Um, and, uh, we, we need to, now I've got to figure out what they are good at and where, and where we, and where we can dive into that. Um, so, so we'll kind of wrap it up here. Um, typically how we wrap it up. Um, I ask two questions, um, that are more tailored to who you are. Um, and then, uh, also at the end, um, I actually, cause I've done a lot of interviews and people interview me in different countries and different things. And I'm sitting there talking to somebody and in my head, I'm thinking, man, there's things I'd really like to know about this guy or really. So I'm actually going to allow you to ask me a question, um, at the end as well. So, okay. um, so, so your two questions, one, we all know teachers, um, sometimes they miss their lunch break. They miss their planning period. 
Uh, you as a superintendent, you probably sometimes uh, get to go home and have to heat your dinner up or, uh, you know, or, <laughs> or, 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 yeah, or fast food on the way home at yeah, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. Or you look out for you, you get that text from your wife that says, Hey, you're on your own tonight. Like we've already ate, like, you know, kind of thing. Um, what, what is that one go-to snack that over <laughs> the year, that over the years you've kept, you've kept in the office? Uh, you know, I, I do a lot of mints. I'll tell you that, but okay, that's not okay. enough to sustain, but I, I'll say this anytime I can get my hands, I'm a, being outside of Philadelphia, anytime I can get my hands on a pretzel or a soft pretzel, I'm a happy mm. kind of guy. Mm. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so the second question is, uh, what is one book that you would recommend, uh, to all educators out there, no matter, um, no matter what level they are in? Who one book, just one book, one book or a book. It doesn't have to be one book, a book that maybe is top of mind. I'm looking over. I have an abundance of books in my library. Um, I would have to say the obstacle is away by Ryan holiday. Um, I love all of his literature that he puts out there, but obstacle is the way, uh, it goes back into that stoic philosophy. Again, your meditations yep. that you mentioned, I carry that yep. everywhere with me. Um, the obstacle is away, it breaks it down, shows you that we've all been through this before for thousands of years and, and yeah. help push forward. So I, I do I do audio books. So I'm 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 right in the middle of it. I've got about two hours and twelve minutes left. I listen when I walk. I go out and go for a walk yep. and I listen. Like so I, it it's kind of in my rotation of books. So now I'm gonna before we wrap it up, I'm gonna turn the floor over to you and allow you. You can ask me a question about my journey, about this project, about current events, sports, whatever you want to ask me. You're welcome to uh, you're welcome to ask me. So you know what is your ultimate goal from this podcast and this. Uh, this opportunity that you're putting together, like what is your ultimate goal? What is your legacy? As you mentioned earlier to me, what are your hopes besides me standing in that long funeral line of yours? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I hope you do come first of all. Uh, <laughs> second of all, um, it, with, with the podcast, um, I want to, again, just create, create, a. I want to try and help correct the narrative. I don't want to change the narrative. I want to correct the narrative, um, of, of what education is, um, at the uh, primary and secondary level um, in the United States, because I think there is a lot of there's a lot that I think the public doesn't know. It's like it's like here, you know, you, the people, the community there that you serve. I hope that they learn a little bit more about who you are as a human in here, because I'm not asking the questions that you're getting asked when the newspaper calls. Right. Like mm -hmm. they're asking, well, what are you doing? What's your policy? How many times are you clean? Like look, you've answered those enough and you, 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 you've answered them enough of your own in sleepless nights, having conversations with yourself at 2am. You don't, you don't need to answer those from me. Um, so I want to help, um, change or, or, you know, correct the narrative, I guess, on education. Um, you know, long-term, obviously my, my legacy, even this and other things is to be able to continue to travel around the world and, and speak to, you know, leadership teams in business, speak to, you know, to, to educators, speak to schools and, and share my journey of your past doesn't define you. And, um, you know, these, these obstacles, these, this trauma that you'll go through in life, um, can actually be kind of twisted around and used almost as a superpower, uh, mm -hmm. kind of once you come through it. So, um, you know, I, I joke, I want to impact a million lives, uh, in, in my journey. I've, I've been blessed to, you know, connect and speak with so many different people all around the world and different languages and, and different places. Uh, so that is, that, that really is my legacy. I want to, I want to, you talked about it who you know, um, that's really for me, you know, um, you and I've never would have met. We maybe never would have crossed paths if it weren't for LinkedIn and it weren't for me doing this. And now, um, I've got a guy that I can, I've already started following you on Twitter since we've been sitting <laughs> here and, um, that I hope that I can have some just normal, com normal dad yeah. conversations with, uh, with a guy who, uh, clearly sees things from a culture and leadership standpoint from, you know, as me and that I'm happy to be a sounding board. And, and it sounds like, you know, you're, you, you love that part of the process as well. And, um, meet more interesting, impactful, positive people like yourself. That's that. That's my legacy. That's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. I love it. 
I appreciate that. Well, Glenn, listen, um, I, I mean this very, very sincerely. Thank you for what you do. Um, you, you, you know, you didn't pay to come on here. This isn't a PR thing. This is you randomly because of your position and your LinkedIn title and how the algorithm showed up. You showed up in my timeline of me connecting with other people. And, um, I hope, I hope my hope is that the people around you and the people in your community truly do understand and listen to how you're saying some of the things, because it's one thing to see a person work. It's another thing to hear why they're doing what they're doing and, and how they're doing it. Um, and I would I will tell you this. I've got kids. I've got a wife in the school system. I would be over the moon to know that my wife, um, you know, was employed in a district that had somebody uh, like yourself or that my kids were coming up um, in a system, in a process. And then I was in a community um, that is open. And it sounds like you're one of those guys that you love the phone calls. You love the input. You love the the feedback, even even when it's maybe not positive. Um, but 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 we all can grow from that. So you you truly do embody. This is a welcome conversation. Sometimes these things are are stale and I have no idea who I'm getting on with. Um, I didn't. You and I had no conversation. Actually, had to had to cancel on me once before, yeah, and then, yeah. and then we, which is okay, which is okay. Um, and um, yeah, I, I truly do appreciate you waking up every day and accepting the challenges. And who knows, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll end up in your neck of the woods speaking at the school, or you know, just I'll pop in and uh, I can make a drive and we can grab some. I'm, I'm there has to be some good seafood around somewhere. Just a couple of places, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ha ha has to be. So, so I'll maybe I'd love I'd love to do that. If you're ever down in Kentucky, I live right here in Bourbon Country, where I can take and show you the beautiful sights, and um, it's a it's a beautiful place. If you've never been to Kentucky, or if you ever do make it down here, that sounds um, like an awesome awesome opportunity. Either way, my friend, I really appreciate everything you just said. Thank you. A absolutely, and I mean it. I don't. I don't. I mean, you, one thing you'll learn about me when you follow and you get to know me, I'm. I, I, I have, I gain nothing from, you know, from being a friend or just being honest. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I, I actually, so, so you asked about my legacy. My legacy is my, my, my transparency and my authenticity. So for me, that is what I'm known for, whether it was growing up in the bad neighborhood. And if Shane told you something was going to happen, good or bad, that was going to happen to yeah. now being somebody of that's how I do it. So, um, if I say, then that's what I mean. And, and, and I hope that my reputation and my authenticity can, can help support, but you don't need me to validate what you're doing. You're, you're doing that every day in your walk, but I, I, if I can support in some way, or if I can ever be of any help or ever take I'm a phone take, call, I'm going to take you up on that, my friend, I really am. So I, I, if you, if, that. if, 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 I, if you ever need another guest for one of those Friday calls with your with your team. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, you, you don't even, you don't even have to ask. You just hit me with some dates and I'll, I'll lock one in. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Glenn, you. I, I massively appreciate you and um, absolutely great episode. And thank you guys for listening. Thank you, sir. All right. Cheers.